Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Who, he who believes in me will live, even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes. Why? John three sixteen through 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Oh yeah, happy Easter. Well, you don't sound too convincing that it's happy. I don't know, I get that it's happy. But? Can I tell you something you'll promise not to tell? I wouldn't tell anybody. So, I know what the Bible says, and I really believe that God came down and did it for us. He took my sin and yours and made a direct path to God for us. And I accepted him into my life as my savior. But here's the part I have trouble with. We're listening. I'm listening. So, a couple weeks ago, I told my parents I was going to John's house, which I did. But I didn't tell them that John's parents wouldn't be home, and he had a ton of other kids over, too. I felt really bad about it after. I kept feeling bad about it until I couldn't take it anymore and I told my parents and apologized. It was good that you told your parents though, wasn't it? Yeah, but then last week, let's just say I didn't study for my test and I did something very stupid when I took it. I got a very undeserved A. Oh, I see. So, because of Christ's victory over death, I'm forgiven? But I keep doing dumb stuff. You will always do dumb. We will always do dumb stuff. <laughs> you know, sometimes it helps me to visualize things. Come over here. Think of this large picture in the middle as Jesus. Notice how clear it is? That's because he was perfect and had no sin in his life. Notice the picture on the end with the disgusting color? Think of that as sin. And this picture here is you. Well, us. Before Adam and Eve disobeyed God in the Garden of Eden, we looked like this. But then came the fall. They did what God told them not to, and sin entered their lives. But then, when you accepted Jesus into your life, he came and washed your sin away. God sent his only son to take our deserved punishment. He suffered so much for us. They even murdered him. But here is the truly incredible part. Not only did he take our sin, but he took all sin and desires everyone to know his love. He even has victory over death. Now that is something to be happy about. Happy Easter! Well, what a great visual representation of what Christ has done for us. Join me in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you uh, that you have conquered sin, Satan, and hell. That you are risen. Lord, we celebrate that today. That you are not in a tomb somewhere, but Lord, you have risen. You are alive and well, and you are here to transform our lives this morning. Lord, I pray right now that you would have your way in this service, and Lord, that you would continue your transforming work in our hearts. And Lord, I pray if there's anyone in this room right now that does not yet know you as their Savior and Lord, I pray that today would be the day of their salvation. Today would be the day that they would pray uh, to receive you into their lives, and Lord, that they would have you be the Lord and Savior of their, of their life and of their eternity. 
In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, what a day we get to celebrate together. Easter is amazing. This past Friday night, we celebrated Good Friday, and we celebrated Christ's crucifixion on the cross. But Jesus did not stay in the tomb that they buried him in. Jesus is alive and well. Jesus is risen. And his finished work on the cross and his conquering sin, Satan, and hell by coming out of a tomb alive does something quite wonderful for each and every one of us. And I like to keep things super, super simple because this world com- tries to confuse us, tries to make things more muddy and, and chaotic uh, than we'd care to believe. But today, we're going to talk about three words. And they're up on the screen. Jesus saves sinners. It's pretty cut and dry. It's pretty straight, straightforward. But there is a lot of depth behind these words. And as we talk about these three key words, I'm hoping that God, by his Holy Spirit, comes into each of our lives and radically transforms us by his grace. This is something that we cannot do on our own strength, but he desires to do in each of our lives. So for those of you that maybe are visiting, welcome. I am so glad you're here. Uh, My name's Tim. And I'm serving as the interim pastor here until Lakeside, until God provides the next pastor for Lakeside. And I know that God will do that because God is so very faithful. So if you're new here, if you're new to this whole church thing, welcome. Um, This is only my ninth Sunday here, uh, so I'm kind of new too. Uh, But if you've been a Christian for a while, you've been here for a long time, these words that Jesus saves sinners is a reality in your life as well. If you have been a follower of Jesus Christ, I'm sure you realize that you still continue sinning. And God, by his grace, desires that you would be transformed every day, day after day after day, looking more and more and more like Jesus as you grow as a follower of Jesus Christ. And that's something that God, by his grace, wants to do in your life. So these words, Jesus saves sinners, are, this is great news for all of us. And we are going to unpack these three simple words. Uh, the first word that I want to unpack is Jesus. Now, Jesus, uh, we could just talk all morning about Jesus, but we're not going to just talk about Jesus. But what I want to communicate to you about Jesus are three simple truths. Jesus lived a perfect life, Jesus died a brutal death, and Jesus has risen from the dead, conquering sin, Satan, and hell. And we want the Bible, the Word of God, to inform how we live life. We want the Bible to tell us what this Jesus is all about. And the first point that I want to talk about, like I said, is that he lived a perfect life. Now, if any one of you were to follow me around the rest of the day, you would catch me sinning at some point. You'd be like, oh, Tim is not perfect. It wouldn't take us very long. Probably the car ride, you know, maybe even as I'm like walking out of here, you'd catch me sinning or maybe at, for sure on the highway. Um <laughs> Oh, wait, you're all here. (laughs) Um, We sin, but Jesus has never sinned. In Psalm 145, it says that he he is perfect in all his promises and loving towards all he has made. He has never sinned once. I can't make it five minutes. He has made it all eternity without sinning. And a key verse talking about his sinless nature is found in 1 Peter 2, 22. It says, He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. Not only had he not sinned, he didn't even say a bad word. And we say bad words all the time. If we don't say it with our lips, it's at least in our mind. 
And Jesus was perfect. He was the only one that could be a perfect sacrifice to take away our sins. If we look at 2 Corinthians 5.21, it says, For our sake, he, meaning God, made him, meaning Jesus, to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Listen to that again. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. That is good news. That is phenomenal news. Jesus knew no sin. And he took our sin upon himself that we might have life. But the Bible goes on in 1 John 3, 5. It says, you know that he appeared to take away sins, and in him there was no sin. Do you guys get the point? Jesus did not sin. Jesus was perfect. Jesus was perfect and the only spotless lamb that was capable of taking away the sin of the world. Just like the students demonstrated up here, The only way we can be cleaned up, the only way that our sin problem can be dealt with is Jesus. There is one way. On the back of your bulletin is a uh, verse that says, um, it's Jesus, and it says that he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father but through me. Jesus is the only way, and the reason he is the only way is because he was perfect. The Old Testament even talks about his perfection. In Isaiah 53, 9, it says, And they made him, uh, and they made his grave with the wicked and with the rich man in his death, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. There was absolutely no problem with Jesus. Jesus was spotless, perfect. And he offered his perfection to us in exchange we give him our sin. It sounds like we get the better end of the deal on this. We give him our sin, he gives us perfection. But not only um, did Jesus live a perfect life, he died a brutal death. He was judged unfairly. He was condemned as a prisoner He was beaten to a bloody pulp where the flesh was ripped off of his body. He was told and commanded that he carry a heavy cross to his own crucifixion. And then he was crucified on a cross. And if if you've ever seen a crucifixion or a depiction of a crucifixion, it is a brutal way to die. So the first reality is that Jesus lived a perfect life. But the second reality is that Jesus died a brutal death. He died the death that we deserved. And he willingly did that because he loves us. So if you're new to this whole Christianity thing, you're new to this whole Jesus thing, know that you are dearly loved by God. He could not love you any more than he does right now. He dearly loves you. And the way we know he loves us is Romans 5.8 says, but God demonstrated his love for us in this. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He didn't wait for us to clean ourselves up and come before him. And the reason he didn't wait for that is because it won't work. We cannot save ourselves. We cannot clean ourselves up. It is by Jesus' blood on the cross, his sacrifice given for us that we can be made white as snow, that we can be made clean. But not only did he live a perfect life and die a brutal death, he is risen. That's why we're here this morning. He is risen. And listen to these words found in Luke 24. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, They went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared, 
And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground. And the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you when he was in, still in Galilee? Jesus told his disciples, told his followers that he would rise again. And rise again he did. That's why we're here today. We're here because we serve a risen king. And because he is a risen king, that, that brings out the reality that Jesus saves sinners. So Jesus not only lived a perfect life, died a brutal death, but he is risen from the dead and has conquered sin, Satan, and hell. The next reality we're going to talk about is our condition as sinners. Now, this is not a reality that we like to even really think that much about, but honestly, we all turn to our own ways. Quite often, we think we know better than God. We think, you know what? I can fix my problems. I'll just stop sinning. In in Isaiah 53, 6, it says, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of us all. The Lord laid our sin upon Jesus, and one of our greatest sins is the sin of pride, thinking we know better than God. We don't. The reality is he knows far more than we could ever think that we would ever be able to understand or learn. God knows what we need. So the reality is that we all turn, turn to our own way. And the Bible um, goes on in First Peter t- to restate this again. For you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of of your souls. So we turn away from Jesus, we turn away from what he has done on the cross, but we have the opportunity, even today, to turn back and face the wonderful cross of Jesus Christ and turn back or return to the shepherd and overseer of our souls. And that's my hope and prayer today is that we do that that we would turn away from our own way and turn to God's way. That we would turn from the reality of trying to be self-sufficient to living a life that is Jesus-dependent. The next verse, many of you probably know this, Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. This is another reality about us as sinners. Not only have we turned our own way, Every single one of us in this room have sinned. That's a hard reality, but I I am so thankful that the Bible is crystal clear on this. If we look at Romans 3.23, we can't dodge the fact that we've all sinned. It states it very, very clearly. So I know if you're living and breathing, I know you have sinned. I don't personally know how you've sinned unless you share it with me. But God does. But our sin does not stop his love. God demonstrated his love for us in this. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So even though we are sinful, God by his grace still loves us. Romans 6.23 goes on to say, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life In Christ Jesus, our Lord. If you follow the path of sin and you follow it to its end, every sin leads to death. And 
Jesus died once and for all that we might come to know God. His death is the death that we deserved. Sin leads to death. And for us that are followers of Jesus Christ, sin led to the death of Jesus Christ so that we might have life. So the reality of us as sinners is we have turned to our own ways. We've all sinned, every single one of us. And where our sin leads us in the end is death. But thanks be to God that we do not have to stay there. There's another word in our short sentence. Jesus saves sinners. So we talked about Jesus. We talked about sinners. Here's my favorite part. Jesus saves sinners. I'm going to read just a few verses before the ones up on the screen as well. Uh, This is from Ephesians chapter 2. I'm going to start in verse 4. And it says, But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. There are three simple realities about us as saved sinners. This reality of being saved is that the first reality is that we cannot save ourselves. Believe me, I've tried. It does not work. If you've ever tried this, you're like, okay, maybe you have a bad habit and there's a a habitual way that you sin. And you're like, you know what, I'm just going to stop. By willpower alone. I'm going to grit my teeth and I'm never going to sin again. Have any of you been there? <laughs> Where you're like, I'm just going gonna, gonna to solve this problem once and for all. Um, our once and for all last about three minutes. Or maybe 40 seconds, um, to be more honest. Maybe a second. And we find ourselves sinning again. We cannot save ourselves. If we could have saved ourselves, we would have. But we can't. There's only one way we can be saved. And that one way is Jesus Christ. Not only can we not save ourselves, but the second reality is that we are saved by the grace of God. What we deserve is death. What he chooses to give us is life in Christ. And he gives us life by the death of Jesus. So Jesus died on a cross that we might have life. And not only are we saved by his grace, if we look at this passage, it says very, very clearly, uh, for by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. You can't boast in your own salvation. But we can boast in the cross of Christ. And we should. It is a glorious cross. But we aren't just saved for our own sake. We don't just get to live the rest of our days on this earth going, I'm saved. He actually saves us for a purpose. While we're on earth, he saves us so that we can walk in the way that he created us to walk. The second half of this slide says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, 
which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. If you are saved, you are a masterpiece. God desires to do a work to continually transform you, but as that's happening, we get to join God's redemptive mission to see his grace-filled gospel go out to the people around us. We're not just saved for our own sake. We're saved for God's mission. So we, we cannot save ourselves. We are saved by God's grace. And the third reality is we are saved for a purpose. And that purpose is to be His church living on mission. And in the coming weeks, the four weeks uh, that remain in the month of April, we're going to actually be talking about what does it mean to live an everyday mission. So I want to invite you to come back uh, to join us for those upcoming weeks. We're going to be talking about living on mission in our family, in our church, in our city, and in our world. And God has a plan for Lakeside to not only be a good church to one another, but to be a good church to the community and to the world as we spread out and make an impact for his name. Once again, this simple little sentence, Jesus saves sinners, it's only three words, but it is eternally profound. We could study for the rest of our lives, Jesus. We could study for the rest of our lives, saved sinners. And we should. We should continually become more and more like Jesus day by day by his grace. We can't do this, but my prayer is that Jesus would do his work in our lives today and from this day moving forward. So if you are sitting here today and the Holy Spirit's tugging on your heart, maybe you haven't yet prayed to receive Christ as your Savior and Lord. I would love nothing more than to talk with you um, about that or maybe you could talk with the person or, or family member that brought you. This is a great opportunity to realize the reality of this simple sentence, Jesus saves sinners. And for those of us that maybe have been followers of Christ for a long time, um, the reality it still rings true today. Jesus saves sinners. We should all celebrate the good news that Jesus saves sinners and that Jesus is alive and well and active in and through his church today. So let's pray together. Once again, if you have any questions about salvation, any questions about what that means, I will be available as well as I'm sure there are a number of other people around the church here that would love to talk with you about what that saving work looks like in our everyday lives. So let's pray. Dear Lord, we are so very thankful for your saving work in our lives. Lord, the reality is we can't save ourselves. Each and every one of us are in desperate need of a loving Savior. And Lord, we thank you that you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to die on a cross in our place so that we might become the righteousness of God, so that we might stand before you spotless and blameless, pure and holy, not on our own accord or strength, but Lord, on your wisdom and on your provision through Jesus. So Lord, I pray right now that you would continue your work in our lives. We thank you that you are risen. And Lord, we thank you that your risenness allows us to be saved. In your precious and mighty name we pray this. Amen.